<laughs> Sir, we are live. We will start the session in four minutes. Hello, sir, ma'am. Can I start the session? Are you all ready to speak us? Yes. Yes. Sir, ma'am, I am starting the session. Good evening, everyone. I welcome you all to the Asia SAP ASR ISRRT webinar 4. I request Professor Ng to start the session. Session over to you, sir. Hey, thank you, uh, the Sumit. Good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the fourth uh, webinar. Uh, this is a collaboration between Asia Safe, AOSR, and ISRRT. Um, Asia Safe was formed uh, by the Asian Oceanian Society of Radiology, AOSR, to promote radiation safety in radiology that will include imaging, nuclear medicine, and radiotherapy or oncology. So uh, previously, we had very successful webinars on radiology. There's collaboration between radiologists and radiographers or technologies, uh, and also radiation oncology. And today, we will focus on nuclear medicine. As usual, we will have one who is a clinical, for example, today we have a nuclear medicine consultant and also with a radiographers or technologists. 
So we uh, will listen to both of them and see how we can work together. So before we proceed with our webinar today, I'd like to welcome Professor Tomiyama, who is the president of the AOSR, to welcome you. Professor Tomiyama, please. Uh, yes, uh, I'm Noriki Tomiyama from Osaka University in Japan, and now I'm uh, AOSR president. Uh, thank you so much for joining AOSR and ISRRT webinar. Yeah. Uh, as uh, Professor Energy said, uh, today's uh, today webinar is the fourth in a series of joint webinars about Asia SEP. Uh, this time, we are especially focusing on nuclear medicine. Um, uh, as you know, uh, now, uh, theranautics is a very hot topic all over the world. And also now we have many uh, radioisotope drugs. Uh, let's run together until the end. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Tomiyama. So uh, now I'd like to introduce the two speakers. Uh, okay. Yeah. The next slides. The um, Dr. Kitty White Kamwan is from uh, Bangkok, Thailand. He's the assistant professor at the Department of Radiology, Faculty of Medicine, Chuan Long Kong University, uh, Bangkok. Uh, he's a director in the BSc program uh, of uh, radiological technology, Chuan Long Kong University, and also he is the regional coordinator in education for Asia and Australia region for the ISRRT, which is the International Society of Radiographers and Radiologic Technologists. Uh, is well trained with the uh, uh, medical imaging and also in uh, biomedical engineering, uh, both from Chalung Kung University. Uh, he was also a postdoc. Uh, at the famous John Hopkins University in Baltimore uh, on medical imaging physics. Huh? Also, he has received several awards and honors. So uh, we'll listen to him, uh, Kitty Watt, uh, later. Uh, the next speaker is the, Dr. Rona Efrin from uh, Bangladesh. Uh, she's the Dr. Messon, uh, MD radiology and imaging uh, in qualified in uh, MBBS. Uh, and she's with the Bangladesh Atomic Energy Commission. Uh, the current working place is the Institute of Nuclear Medicine and Allied Sciences in Dhaka Medical College Hospital. And she holds the rank of an associate professor. Uh, she's also a member of several uh, professional organizations uh, such as World Association of Radio Pharmaceutical and Molecular Therapy, uh, Life Members of Bangladesh Society of Radiology Imaging, Bangladesh Society of Nuclear Medicine, uh, Bangladesh Medical Association, and, and others as well. So she's very active in uh, professional uh, matters. Uh, she also has been involved in the quadril uh, program of the IAEA and very active in research and publication. Okay, so we have two very prominent speakers, practitioners in nuclear medicine today. Okay, so uh, next with that, and we will have the question and answers uh, Q&A session after the two speakers. Each is given about 20 minutes, so we have more time for Q&A. So I'd like to invite the first speaker, the Kitty Watt come on to start the webinar this evening. Uh, can you see my slides? Yeah, I hope so. Yes, yes. yes sir. Uh, all right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Prof. Un. And um, again, uh, good evening, good afternoon, probably good morning, everyone. So thank you so much, Prof. Un, again, for your kind introduction. And uh, it's my honor uh, to, to have a chance to join the Asia SEF uh, today. So today I'm gonna talk about the teamwork and collaboration. 
are essential for radiological safety in the agnostic and therapeutic nuclear medicine, as uh, Prof. Ng mentioned, in terms of the technology's perspective. I, I think uh, after this, about 20 minutes, I think I can give the point of view in terms of the uh, nuclear medicine technologies to, to all of you guys. Well, as we know, nuclear medicine team consists of the um, many of the um, profession to, to work together in nuclear medicine department. Yeah, start with the nuclear medicine physician is one of the most important person in, in department. And we have the nuclear medicine technologies, right? Medical physicists, nurse, radio pharmacists or chemists, engineer scientists, and also the supporting staff and et cetera. Um, teamwork is a core value in nuclear medicine. Working is effective team uh, could improve clinical outcome and increase professional satisfaction and provide crucial peer support. This is in the, the general concept. However, teamwork as a core value is often missing. This could be limited the, the benefit that we achieve. So teamwork in nuclear medicine requires more than just communication skill, coordination, or even mutual goals. Effective teamwork requires a collaborative mindset that recognize in inherent value of the team model and a commitment to build effective relationship. How to improve this? The training and education program can help to improve the team skill, including the um, um, communication, uh, proficiency, situational awareness, and performance assessment. With a collaborative mindset in the place in nuclear medicine department, team will become natural opportunity for integrate integration, innovation, and quality improvement. For the team-based uh, care in nuclear medicine can improve the safety, efficiency, and quality of the healthcare and enable nuclear medicine team to meet the people need and advance to uh, the health of the population. Inversely, in contrast, if we cannot work as a team effectively, when team is not a core value, so can go through the, the motion, but lack of the underlying uh, conviction necessary for effective collaboration. So uh, this is the, the thing that could be happened. For the value team integration, in general, effective team should have clear, common understanding of each other roles and responsibility. This is really important in, actually in not, in, not only in nuclear medicine, which allow them to act appropriately and work together effectively. And a collaborative mindset is also essential for, 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 uh, for forming inclusive and psychologically uh, safe teams. Another thing is that we can like create the psychological safety in nuclear medicine uh, environment, an environment in which people feel comfortable, can be uh, curious, are uh, empowered to participate and are permitted to be uh, vulnerable. Psychological safety is an important dif uh, differentiator in creating learning organization where the people can grow and contribute to improve the, the performance. Um, that, that is the, so how to, how to uh, elevate nuclear medicine into an efficient uh, frontline service in the healthcare. So I would say that there are four key areas that need uh, attention to uh, capitalize on the molecular imaging, unique uh, capability, and uh, elevate a nuclear medicine department to a highly visible and integrated part to the patient care team. So the four key area uh, to consist of the staff, the first one staff and the patient focus, second one hospital and nuclear medicine department infrastructure. Uh, the third one is the human factor. This is one of the most important uh, keys and the workflow management. So we starting with the, with the patient. As we know, people are the more, uh, the, the people or the human resource are the most important part of the nuclear medicine department. Patient, they have the right and expectation when they come to the nuclear medicine department or even radiology department. And they deserve to get the best inpatient center care. It is important to meet uh, with the patient and explain what you are going to do and what you are expecting to see from imaging phase in nuclear medicine. Collaboration among medical team has proven to be effective in impacting patient outcomes. 
and coordinate communication and image quality are extremely important in establishing confidence in a nuclear medicine department. As I mentioned, human factor in the workflow is a critical part to its success for innovating nuclear medicine into efficient frontline service. And nuclear medicine workflow need to be efficient, but also harmonious. The nuclear medicine department need to interact and collaborate with the clinician outside department also. Well, uh, in order to, to, uh, to move uh, like, or even to, to, uh, to, to, do, to work at a, as a team work and also for the collaborate with the, uh, with the other department. So the, right now we have the advanced uh, equipment in nuclear medicine. This is one of the challenging points for the transition from the old to the new technology that need the nuclear medicine team work and the collaboration to improve the clinical service in nuclear medicine. So this is the example. Previously, we have the, like the unconventional the PCT scanner that utilized the uh, PM2. So right now we trained uh, from conventional PCT to the digital detector PCT that uh, utilized the digital detector. So this technology can like reduce the scan time uh, more than half, like from 20 or half an hour to just 10 to 15 minutes for the whole body scan for the fully engine FDG. And then the injected activity. So we can utilize like the half dose protocol from 0 0.15 uh, millikiri per kilogram, reduced to just only 0 0.07 millikiri per kilogram for the fully engine FDG. So this is the thing that we need to work together as a team work for the technologies, work closely to the nuclear medicine physician, uh, like. Uh, about the image quality and the scanning protocol for the new te technology. This is the an another example of the transition from the old to, to the new technology that need the team work to, to ensure the, the performance of the um, diagnostic. Well, and right, and also this is the example like we have a uh, better of the image quality compared to the uh, previous technology for the PET CT. So we need to, to work closely together between nuclear medicine technologies and nuclear medicine physician. What, what is the optimal of the image quality that uh, enough for the interpretation? And, and also in the, in the role of the technologies for the diagnostic, we can like uh, utilize the, the advanced technology for the equipment that, that we have for the diagnostic to help nuclear medicine and also for the nuclear also the clinician that outside nuclear medicine department. So this is the example. We can like help them to, to, um, uh, to scan like for the dynamic scan for the advanced study. This is the example for the, for the fully net, for the fully net in sodium fluoride bone imaging that at five for the dynamic study about 60 minutes for the uh, chronic hemodialysis patient who has the, with the osteoporosis patient. So this is the example of the dynamic study for the fully etched uh, sodium chloride for the bone imaging. And then we need to apply at the correct region in order to obtain the uh, input function. So, and then we, we, we can uh, use this information from dynamic study to create the, like uh, to determine the kinetic parameter. And then we use these to uh, help nuclear medicine physician uh, for the interpretation, like for the, for the quantity parameter to help in uh, interpretation. Well, uh, this is the, 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 the project that uh, ongoing at our center regarding the kinetic modeling for the uh, sodium fluoride, for the, uh, sodium fluoride for the uh, PET imaging for the, um, osteoporosis patient with uh, chronic hemodialysis patient. We need to determine the kinetic parameter to predict the um, bone turnover in the chronic kidney disease with hemodialysis patient, like a uh, non-invasive biomarker. Uh, in, in actually, uh, for the, the gold standard for the bone turnover evaluation, the patient must 
uh, underwent the uh, surgery operation, this is quite an uh, invasive method. So uh, this approach that uh, utilized the new technology or advanced technology for the agnostic could, could be a uh, health um, clinician and also nuclear medicine physician for classify the bone turnover rate should be high or low turnover uh, to replace the invasive method. And then we will determine the uh, kinetic parameter uh, to, to, for the prediction. Well, so this is the example of the, of the, um, of the day that we start uh, to, to, uh, to utilize the kinetic uh, modeling by scanning the patient based on the, the, the um, dynamic study. So you can see, see uh, this is like we work as a teamwork, it's not only for the nuclear medicine physician and technologies, we have the nephrologist to, to help us for the evaluation. And then um, this is the, the, the uh, so right now we also submit uh, this project into the ENM uh, that will be held in Vienna this year for the petition of the bone turnover in chronic kid, uh, kidney disease with hemodialysis using KI PET lab. So uh, this is the example of the collaboration between um, nuclear medicine physician and the clinician outside uh, nuclear medicine department. And well, other thing is, is that this is the example of the transition of the from old to the new technology of the PET uh, from, from the analog to the digital detector at the Anatel Hospital, at the Sidilat Hospital at Mahidon University. It's like a nuclear medicine physician and then technologies work together to optimize the uh, image quality from the brain imaging. Right. Uh, in terms of the therapeutic in nuclear medicine, the management of therapeutic patients are quite different from the agnostic patient because of the higher level of exposure involved that uh, utilize the unsealed nuclei in the form of liquid that administer orally or intravenously to treat the cancer in the patient. So it means that these patients are allowed to leave to facility following the treatment and only general uh, radiation safety precautions are advised. So especially for therapeutic nuclear medicine. So we need to work uh, as a team work. We need great team work to deal with the patient uh, before patient hospitalized and before allowing the patient go back home. And in nuclear medicine um, um, section, we have the quality management audit in nuclear medicine practice we call CONAM to improve the quality of nuclear medicine practice and management at nuclear medicine center. So this is the checklist that we went to the uh, uh, therapeutic nuclear medicine for the patient radiation protection, radio therapy, and assessment of the therapy. So this topic need um, nuclear medicine team to work together. Again, uh, what information should get from the patient before administering administering the therapeutic radiopharmaceutical. The oral and written explanation of therapy are useful to help the patient understand of the nature of the treatment and any risk to the patient or other person. So this procedure should also be recorded in the patient medical uh, record. So this one, we need a multidisciplinary team to work together in order to uh, improve the, the efficiency of the treatment and also the quality of life of the patients after the treatment. So this is the example of the instruction for the patient uh, in like for the therapeutic nuclear medicine in the uh, thyroid cancer treatment. Uh, the patient who have to be uh, admitted in the hospital so the, the radio activity should be greater than 30 military. This is the, according to the, the, the legal policy. And uh, in, in the hospital uh, must have the release criteria for, for this kind of the patient. The patient who have been administered radio from a surgical for the treatment may export member of the public upon the release. It means that the arrangement should be in a place to manage the release of patient and consideration should be given to uh, respective flow of the patient and visitor in the family. So um, nuclear medicine team uh, should be uh, 
arrange and have a good management about this. So this is the, 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 the example of the um, collaboration between nuclear medicine team and engineering team. So we developed like the robot for the thyroid cancer treatment uh, patient care. This could be, um, could be reflect a, a, a good example for the collaboration among the department. And also this could be improved the, um, the, the service of the patient in therapeutic nuclear medicine and could reduce the exposure to the staff. So this is the example. So this is the, the robot that we uh, developed and used in, um, in, in, in IODI 131 ward at our hospital. So this robot can uh, help the nuclear medicine staff for the, to interview the patient history and also like to communicate with the, uh, with the, with the IODI 131 treatment patient and could be reduced the exposure to the, to the staff. And so right now in nuclear medicine, we, um, we uh, live in the era of the theranostic. This is the concept that combine between the theranostic and uh, the therapy and the agnostic. This is the state of the art treatment in modern nuclear medicine right now. So we diagnose with the, um, uh, for the diagnostic scan, like by using the positron or uh, gamma emitter radiopharmaceutical such as purine 18 or gallium 68. And then um, the patient uh, after the treatment will be confirmed the, the, the treatment site is correct after the post therapy scan to demonstrate the achievable tumor dose. So right now lutetium 177 is one of the most widely used uh, radiopharmaceutical use for the theranostic. So in order to set up the Theranostic in nuclear medicine department, we need to have a, a good team uh, work together between nuclear medicine physician, technologist, nurse, uh, even physicist, or even uh, radio pharmacist. Right. And if we need to evaluate right, the, uh, the, the radiation dose to the patient, to the organ at risk, um, so we need to, to uh, scan the patient several times and calculate the dose in the organ at risk. And we need to evaluate the external and internal exposure and also the, to avoid the contamination. And well, this is the example of the, um, of the scanning of the patient for the dosimetry evaluation because we need to evaluate for the nephrotoxicity. This is the, the another role of the technologies that can help the team in the Toronostic. And this is the, the, the first uh, patient uh, in, in Thailand, that treated by the lutetium 177 TSMA for metastasis prostate cancer at King Chula Longkorn Memorial Hospital. So you can see that uh, we have like the nuclear medicine team uh, work together. Uh, so we have um, nurse and uh, like, and also this is the nuclear medicine physician. This is one of the most important uh, staff in nuclear medicine. And then after that, we scan the patient to to see uh, the, the side that we will be we treat it is correct. So we see what we treat and we treat what we see. This is the concept of the Toronostic. And after that, we, we um, like in case of we need to calculate the dosimetry for the organ at risk to the patient, or even we need to know the absorbed dose in the tumor in order to, um, to, to, to personalize treatment for the Toronostic. So, uh, technologies and also nuclear medicine physician have to sit together and draw like the region, especially in the tumor, the boundary of the tumor that that uh, too difficult uh, to define. So we need to, to work together in, in, in this uh, step. So this is the example in, in the process that we uh, try to calculate the dosimetry together and uh, luckily, our nuclear medicine physician they um, they they uh, need to know the the, the dosimetry and they um, they um, like pay attention the the importance of the dosimetry in nuclear medicine for the theranostic. And this is the the example of the tumor and organic contouring in like for the lutetium one seventy seven for the PSMA. and then we calculate the the dosimetry. Yes. And then as, um, as we know, 
for the um, pronostic. This is the this is the precision oncology. So uh, if we can work together as a teamwork and have a collaboration among the profession, so we can like um, treat the patient uh, very effectively and very promising for for the treatment. So at our center, we adjust the the administer activity in each of the cycle after we calculate the dosimetry. Like this is the example of the one left uh, kidney patient who's suffering from the prostate cancer. So you can see we adjust the injected activity in each of the cycle to uh, for the personalized treatment. And then we can calculate like the cumulative dose um, for the patient in order to avoid the toxicity for the organ at risk. And the other thing that we need to work as a teamwork, uh, not only for the PET-CT, the another scanner like for the um, spec CT that right now change from the uh, analog to the digital detector. So this is the example of the um, of the 12 swiveling digital detector that just installed at our hospital. It based on the CSET detector. It has high sensitivity, better resolution, with better discrimination of the peak and could decrease the acquisition time and total activity. So how to determine the optimal protocol and how to determine the image quality when we use uh, the new technology. This is quite, this is quite a really new and change the technology of the uh, nuclear medicine. So I can show you the example. Okay, and you can see like this is the example of the of the um, bone scan uh, applied by the, this this kind of the spec CT. So we need to to help the nuclear medicine physician to make a decision about this. So, and the other thing that we need to to work uh, together as a team work is like the patient care aspect for pediatric nuclear medicine study. This is a very really important thing. So um, this is the example of the project that we call Kid Can Do Project, the pilot project dedicated for pediatric patients at King Chula Longkorn Memorial Hospital. So this project, we can reduce the risk from sedation for pediatric, reduce fear from the scanner, reduce uh, radiation risk from BT scan and improve cooperation from pediatric patients. All right, so you can see, so this is the, the uh, atmosphere and, and also the, uh, then when the pediatric come to nuclear medicine department and then they like, um, they, they looks like familiar with the, um, with this. they didn't fear the environment and they uh, have a good cooperation for the uh, nuclear medicine examination. Okay. And this is the example of the collaboration between nuclear medicine and engineering department again for the, to develop the, the robot for the radiation survey in nuclear medicine department that already start um, service in, in our department. For those who are interested in about the patient safety in nuclear medicine, for the technology's perspective, you can uh, download from the ISRG uh, special issue that published uh, last year. Nuclear medicine will continue to be the field at the forefront of the modern nuclear medicine and technological development. So because we have the develop of the new little pharmaceutical for diagnostic and therapy called diagnostic, expanding clinical use for the exciting technology, we have the advance of the fusion uh, imaging that we need the great teamwork and collaboration. So in conclusion, nuclear, uh, I would say that nuclear medicine technologies play an important role influence on improving patient safety and frontline caregivers to raise concern regarding patient safety. Effective teams should have clear common, uh, com, uh, common understanding of each other role and responsibility and great teamwork and collaboration can improve the safety, efficient and quality of the healthcare to meet patient need and advance the health of population. That's all of my presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Dr. Kitty Wat. It is a wonderful presentation. Really, you. you have taken us to the latest the advances in nuclear medicine, but also importantly, you demonstrated how collaboration and teamwork have moved you all to such an advanced state. I think it's all the latest technology 
probably one of the very first in the world, right? Yes. The CZT technology scanner. Okay, so uh, please, uh, the audience out there, jot down your questions to ask him after uh, the second speaker, uh, who is Associate Professor Dr. Rauna Afrin. So uh, over to you, uh, Dr. Afrin. Yeah. Uh, excuse me, there's no sound. Uh, so no can you look? Okay. We'll check, sir. I would like to express my sincere gratitude to AOSR and Asia State for giving me an opportunity to talk about the teamwork and collaboration for safety practice in diagnostic nuclear medicine and hybrid imaging. Nuclear medicine is a medical specialty that uses radioactive tracers to assess bodily function and to diagnose and treat disease. There are several nuclear medicine imaging approaches, including planar, single photon emission computed tomography, and hybrid imaging like PET CT, PET MRI, and SPEC CT. PET imaging personnel receive relatively large annual radiation doses compared to their counterparts in general nuclear medicine and diagnostic radiology. They are becoming one of the subgroups with highest exposure along with radiological and cardiological interventionists. Bangladesh Atomic Energy Regulatory Authority have been formed to carry out regulatory and safety functions with regard to nuclear power generation and use of ionizing radiations in the country. Bangladesh has nuclear safety and radiation control rules and Bangladesh Atomic Energy Regulatory Act. The goal of radiation protection in nuclear medicine and molecular imaging is to ensure that the expected medical outcome for the patient is achieved and procedure optimized while limiting the radiation risk to the patients, medical personnel, and public. Nuclear medicine physician is responsible for the overall radiation protection of the patient besides his or her general medical and healthcare. Justification of a given nuclear medicine procedure in conjunction with the referring medical practitioner. Nuclear medicine physician's responsibility also include interview and physically examine patients prior to testing ensure that the exposure of patients is the minimum according to relevant guidance level, establish optimized protocols for diagnostic and therapeutic procedures in consultation with the medical physicist and 
technologies. Monitor quality control of radionuclide preparation, administration, or disposition, ensuring that all the activities comply with applicable regulations and standards. Direct nuclear medicine technologies regarding desired doses, techniques, positions, and projections. Nuclear medicine physicians also provide criteria to manage the examination of pregnant women, pediatric patients, occupational health examinations, medical and biomedical research. Check and approve the quality of diagnostic images before patients are discharged. Direct the safe management and disposal of radioactive substances. Evaluate any radiation incident or accident from a medical point of view. Determines the course of action for an emergent situation. Nuclear medicine physician also establish and enforce radiation protection standards for patients and staff. Radiation protection is a central part of the responsibility of nuclear medicine physician, radiologist, and medical physicist performing nuclear medicine procedures and hybrid imaging. High standard of radiation protection is typically achieved by encouraging a safety-based attitude in each individual of the team. Each member should have good theoretical and practical knowledge of ionizing radiation properties, hazards, and protection. Knowledge of all the legislation and codes of practice related to the uses of ionizing radiation in the nuclear medicine field. Medical professional in nuclear medicine and molecular imaging department should always consider patient safety in the first. The radiation dose that patients receive has to be as low as reasonably achievable to provide the best possible patient outcome. To make this possible, a smooth collaboration between nuclear medicine physicians, radiologists, and technologists is needed. Lead nuclear medicine physician or radiologist have to take the responsibility to create a radiation safety culture in the department. He or she has to set an example by following all radiation protection, patient safety policies, and encourage team members to do the same. Also have to create a strong sense of personal accountability within each team member to achieve a common goal. Nuclear medicine physician, radiologist, and technologist must work together to develop a strategic plan. Then, this strategic plan must be turned into an action plan in order to incorporate radiation safety in the routine work of the department. Working closely together will minimize communicational misunderstandings and man-made or technological mistakes. They will be able to change unsafe practices, behavioral hazards, recognize safe practices, and report accidents in order to prevent recurrence. Effective communication is the most important part of teamwork. Effective communication skills are vital to maintaining a safety culture. A great way to improve communication is to hold weekly or monthly talks. Communication might be both formal 
and informal. A strong safety culture requires mutually respectful, trusty relationships between medical radiation practitioner and radiation technologists. When they communicate with each other in an open, respectful manner, they are more willing to give and receive feedback. Good teamwork also requires sound listening skills. Blame culture is detrimental to effective teamwork. Teams that work well together understand the strengths and weakness of each team member. Through working together, colleagues will be aware of their own capabilities and can organize the workload accordingly. All workplaces provide challenges, but having a strong team environment in place can act as a support mechanism for staff members. They can help each other improve their own performance as well as working together toward improving their professional development. A safety conscious work environment have to maintain so that radiation workers will feel free to raise safety concerns without fear of retaliation, intimidation, harassment, or discrimination. Physicians should be receptive to technologists' ideas, concerns, suggestions, and differing options. Safety issues must be raised in confidence and are resolved in a timely and effective manner. Lead radiologists or nuclear medicine physician have to ensure that personnel, equipment, procedures, and other resources are adequate to support the safety system. Radiation medical practitioner and technologists together can build a set of key behaviors. They could establish pre- and post-procedure briefing protocols to establish a margin of safety for the radiation use. Both professionals should receive comprehensive training to maintain a technically competent workforce and ensure radiation safety values. Continuous learning contributes to a positive safety culture. Continuous learning enhances ability and willingness of physician and technologists to apply their individual learning in the workplace and to share and transfer it to their team members. Quality assurance program is another essential step for maintaining safety. Both nuclear medicine physician and technologists are responsible for the implementation and improvement of quality assurance programs in clinical routine. There should be an assignment of the responsibility with specific duties for the performance of quality assurance procedures. Every department should keep records about the quality assurance data. The record must be easily accessible to the staff. Each nuclear medicine and molecular imaging department need to establish a radiation protection committee composed of nuclear medicine physician, medical physicists, and technologists. There must be regular evaluation of the adequacy and effectiveness of quality assurance program itself. All radiation incidents, including near miss, 
should be investigated combinedly by nuclear medicine physician and technologists to ensure safety practice. The investigation of accidental, abnormal, or unplanned exposures arising from diagnostic or therapeutic nuclear medicine procedures should be aimed at establishing what happened, identifying the failure, deciding on remedial action to minimize the chance of a similar failure, and estimating the likely radiation doses received by the patient and his staff. The ability and willingness of team member to identify problem and resolution is another trait of a positive safety culture. Technologies must be included in the development and implementation of emergency operating procedures. Both professionals should have a mindset to deliver a rapid team-based response, particularly during off-normal conditions. The International Atomic Energy Agency has developed quality management audit in nuclear medicine. Audit teams are multidisciplinary and both the nuclear medicine physician and technologists are working together along with radio pharmacists and medical physicists. Insufficient knowledge and lack of collaboration are the most significant barriers in the implementation of safety practice. So our final goal is to work as a team in which the nuclear medicine physician and technologist has their own unique expertise and clinical responsibilities. Their collaboration has a great impact on the operation of the nuclear medicine and molecular imaging department. It improves the efficiency, service quality, reduces incorrect practices, and promotes a good reputation. Thank you all. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Afrin. It's good to mention about the safety culture, and particularly avoiding the blame culture. And thank you also for highlighting the recommendations from the IAEA. So to the audience out there, now is the time for Q&A. Please send in your questions to the chat uh, and stay on. You have to fill the feedback form, the QR code. Uh, at the end of it, we will flash the QR code. So uh, please complete that form, very simple. Uh, and you will receive the certificate of attendance. Okay. So while waiting for the questions to come in, I would like to start off first, uh, perhaps uh, directing to Kitty Wat. We've seen that uh, in Thailand, particularly in Chua Lung Kung University, you have lots of advanced technology, right? The, Zack T, right? And you also have the modeling, uh, the kinetic modeling uh, is wonderful. So how do the technologists and also the nuclear medicine physicians work together uh, to achieve this goal, this high standard? Uh, yeah, that, that's a good question, uh, Prof. Uh, yeah, so because we are the, the, quite the, one of the biggest hospital in, in the country, so we try to like install the, the advanced technology in nuclear medicine to serve like the uh, like the, the clinician in, in 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 our hospital. So uh, well, in order to achieve like the high um, 
to, to achieve the goal regarding like, um, so for the advanced study in nuclear medicine. So, uh, you know, it's like, uh, so, so right now, for example, for the spec CT that we use the CCT uh, detector, but this is the 12 sweeping detector. This is the first machine in Southeast Asia region. Mm -hmm. So we need to like to learn about the, its characteristic, its performance, and also we need to to show to show the nuclear medicine physician how can it work and how it can do. And then, so what is the thing that we can use? The, the, the benefit from this advanced study. So that's why we need to, to have like the, the teamwork. It's like not only the nuclear medicine physician, but we need like someone or the, the person who have the expertise in like, for example, in, in kinetic modeling. And also uh, it's like we, we try to, to encourage the nuclear medicine physician like to, to use this advanced technology to support their uh, the interpretation in addition from like the, from the visualization and then like this could be uh, improve the, the 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 ability and also the performance of nuclear medicine department but uh, you know it's like uh, sometimes they they have to change mindset as well for example like for the they used to 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 interpret for the bone imaging from the um, from the previous technology but for the digital detector the image quality is very good. And they have to read like from the planet uh, imaging for the body imaging. Uh, and they have to, 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 to interpret from the spec imaging instead. So this is the, the, the thing that they, they need to, to change also. Yes. Hmm. yes um, I have a question to Dr. Afri. Okay. Yeah, uh, so um, I'm a diagnost uh, diagnostic radiologist. I'm a chest radiologist. So uh, today I learned a lot. Thank you so much for your wonderful presentation. Uh, my question is, um, in Japan, there, uh, there are not so many uh, nuclear medicine physicists. Yeah, most of the, most of radiologists are um, uh, other um, uh, CT or uh, they are they are interested in CT or MR. Yeah. So do you have uh, do you have enough nuclear medicine physicians uh, physicians in your country? Or if yes, uh, how do you um, organize the uh, manage the examinations nuclear medicine uh, examinations? Uh, in our country, uh, there are several nuclear medicine physicians and uh, some radiologists are also working in nuclear medicine department in molecular imaging mainly. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, the um, nuclear medicine physicians are separated from other diagnostic radiologists? Yes, uh, some diagnostic radiologists also working in nuclear medicine, especially in molecular imaging, okay. like fusion imaging, PET CT and SPECT CT. Um, okay, thank you so much. Uh, I, have a, I have a question to uh, Dr. Uh, Kitiwat uh, Kawan. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, so I'm quite agree uh, that nuclear medicine uh, teamworks and collaborations are so important uh, with, the, with, uh, with the advances of uh, equipment and also with the appearance of uh, new nuclear medicine drugs, yeah, uh, radio pharmacies. Yeah, so um, as you know, um, uh, new, uh, new drug, uh, new drug uh, for Alzheimer's disease uh, uh, was approved uh, by FDA in US and also that it also will be approved in Japan in the near future. And uh, that means uh, art, um, amyloid PET will, will be uh, useful. Yeah. So the number of uh, amyloid PET will increase in the near future. Yeah. So um, uh, uh, at that time, I, uh, that means uh, we have to uh, do a lot of uh, uh, PET scans, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. How do you uh, organize this? 
Oh, that, that's a good question. You know, in, in, in Thailand, we also have the amyloid imaging for the PET CT. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah, we, we already use for the amyloid. Yeah, and we have like for also, also for the tau imaging for the PET as well. It's oh, like, really? Yeah. So oh. if like the three sister, radio pharmaceutical for the, uh, for the Alzheimer's disease, right? For the FEG, amyloid, and the tau. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, but uh, the, the most important is that the cost of mm -hmm. the exhibition for the PET CT in Thailand is, is quite still high. Mm -hmm. But in some institution, they have the cyclotron on site. So they can like uh, produce uh, for the um, like for the FD, for the fluorinating FDG by themselves, and they can reduce the price for this. And for example, in our hospital, we uh, mainly use the FDG because it's quite too difficult to to purchase the amyloid and the tau uh, radio pharmaceutical from the another center. Yes. So uh, the situation is not. Um, it, it depends on like the, the, the it's not the, we, we don't have the, the exactly policy yet. So it depends on the uh, individual institution for, for the management for that. So, but in, in the future, we, we, we try to like to set up um, like for the, we have plan, I mean, in the near future, if we have more budget to install the cyclotron. And then probably we can like have uh, the amyloid imaging or even the tau imaging by ourselves. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, I'm so impressed with your uh, presentation. Yeah, that is so um, updated. Uh, that ha your presentation has so many updated information and also ed educational information uh, as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. And, and then another thing is that, um, so right, right now, because we, because we have the advanced like technology, so we try to investigate like the kinetic modeling, the kinetic parameter for the amyloid imaging, something like that, or yeah. So to, to, to serve or to support the interpretation from the, from the visualization. Thank you. Yeah, I must add that the nuclear medicine is probably one of the the field that is so multidisciplinary, isn't it? Right. B beside yeah. the clinician, uh, the technologists, physicists, you have the radio pharmacists and the engineers, and also a lot of this modeling, we also involve computer scientists as well. Right? And uh, amazing. And I mean, like, uh, not sure. Do you also work with the pathologists as well? Because sometimes you need to look at the, uh, like, for example, some. Uh, patients who might have died and do some autopsy and look at the locations of the amyloid and so on? Um, yeah, I, I, I am, I'm not sure about this, but um, in, in, in some patient, probably uh, they, they take a look for that. Yeah, but, but um, I'm not sure in our institution because we, we did not uh, like, uh, did not use in, 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 in that information, but this is the, 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 the thing that um, I think very, very useful for the amyloid imaging to, to support mm. for the diagnosis. Yes. Yeah, I think this is probably one of the most exciting uh, hot <laughs> topics in the future, right? Yeah. Because Alzheimer's yeah. is affecting lots of people and this tau amyloid will be one of the promising modality. Uh, the, uh, the audience up there, uh, please send in your question. We have a couple of more minutes before we wrap up today's webinar, uh, please uh, text us your unique questions for both the speakers. Hmm. Okay, it, uh, if not, uh, really would like to thank uh, both the speakers, Dr. Kitiwat and also Dr. Afrin, for giving us such a, a wonderful presentation this evening. There's so much we have learned and particularly the importance of collaboration and teamwork right? in the routine clinical practice right now to the very advanced uh, clinical research, right? a lot of advanced technology. So on behalf of the Asia Safe and also for uh, the uh, 
ISRRT and the AOSR like to thank uh, the speakers and the audience, the viewers out there who have tuned in. And I'd uh, like to ask uh, Mr. Sumit to display the QR code. So please uh, capture this QR code uh, for the feedback form, and then you will receive your certificate of attendance. And finally, I'd like to invite our president of AOSR, Professor Tomiyama, to conclude this webinar. Okay. Um, uh, thank you so much for uh, joining uh, today's uh, webinar. So um, uh, today, uh, I think um, uh, today's presentator, uh, presenters uh, gave us so uh, wonderful um, lectures. Yeah, thanks so much. Uh, so um, we are planning um, several webinars in the year. Yes. Uh, so please join the webinar in the future. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much and have a blessed day ahead. Have a good weekend as well. Bye-bye. Bye, thank you. Bye, thank, thank you. Thank you, bye-bye. Sumit, uh, offline? No, sir. Hello? Yeah, uh, are we still? Yes, sir, we are still live. Can we turn off? Sure, sir. Are we off now? Uh, we, we are.